Australia keep their hopes alive, slim as they are, with a win over Portugal, folks, 34 points to 14. I've watched this one a little bit delayed here in NZ, but we'll go through some key events and stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. Pretty entertaining game. They had a few cards, had a few tries. Portugal scored first, in terms of tries. Australia scored a penalty first, but um, yeah, bonus point win for the Aussies means they have a chance, and they don't have a game this coming week so they need to hang around in the slim hopes that portugal can beat fiji in the final game and deny fiji any kind of bonus point because i think all the fijians need is one more point to qualify so yeah weird position for the aussie guys to be in but that is what it is uh key events and stats of the game i mean early pressure from the aussies early and an interesting call to opt for the three Given you know you need to get a bonus point win, I would have thought you want to secure the bonus point early, but again, they're going for the threes, the same as they did in their last game. So three points to nil for the Aussies early. And then there was a good period of Portuguese pressure, man. They they did this multiple times throughout the game. Their fans are insane in a great way. And um, yeah, they, they play some really, really fun rugby, the Portuguese. Great period of pressure. They put a kick through. Corin Betty has to check, uh, chase it back through. He kind of slips over in his own end goal. So it's a five-meter scrum to Portugal. Scrum gets advantage. It's not just about their flashy back. They tap and go, playing high-tempo rugby. And then Appleton out to Betancourt out on the right wing, the midfielder. And, um, yeah, great conversion from the sideline. Seven points to three. Portugal are in front. But minutes after that dry... Betancourt with a high tackle on Parise, a bit of head-on-head -head contact. He gets yellow carded, and boy, did Australia make the most of that period. I mean, initially they opted for three and missed it, which was not making the most of that yellow card period. But they punish when they get a line-out in Portuguese territory. Bell has a big carry. A carry. Valentini with the offload from the deck to Arnold. Great try. 10 points to 7. Yellow cards ruled to begin to stay yellow, which is good news for Portugal. But bad news for Portugal is Bell wins a penalty at the breakdown. Donaldson with a fantastic touch finder. And then a mall try to Parecki. 17 points to 7. And then right when there's about 10 seconds left on the yellow card, the third try for the Australians. It's from kick return. There's some great play. Mark Nowani Tawase puts Fakiri down the right wing. They get Coran Betty trucking it up on the left wing. And then Bell is able to finish it off. 24 points to 7. It's gone from um, a Portuguese lead to suddenly being 24-7 down. Portugal did go bloody close uh, before halftime. Martins ended up getting um, TMO'd for a kind of foot and touch. But it was entertaining rugby. What can you say? The position and territory at halftime. The Aussies edged the position, but the Portuguese edged the territory. So, yeah, that yellow card, pretty costly for Portugal. Second half, again, the Australians punish some poor Portuguese discipline. Not only do they concede a penalty, but they get marched 10 metres, and the Australians punish. Mark Nawanitawase's final pop ball uh, out to the right to uh, Fraser McCray. is a proper thing of beauty as well. Conversion hits the post, but it's 29 points to 7. And then things kind of go a little bit troublesome for for Australia. They defensively hold pretty well, but they are genuinely put under quite a lot of pressure. It gets worse when Fochetti puts in a high tackle, which is just a penalty. The crowd hated that. The crowd really were baying for Fochetti's blood, uh, but it's just a penalty. But that penalty gives the Portuguese chance to go for touch. They try for a maul. It looks initially like they've got it, but the TMO rules that he's lost control over the line. I think Fatma Sili with the big hit to knock the ball loose, but still Fassler gets yellow carded for cynical play at the maul. Portugal go again. Uh, they lose their line out, so it's a bit of a let off, but they are unable to really exit properly, the Australians. And then Karevi, when he's carrying the ball out of his own 22, forearm to the face, I think, of Appleton means he gets yellow carded as well. So 15 on 13, they're going to have to do it tough. Can the Aussies hold on with two men down? Will the Portuguese go for touch again? Australia do shut it down. Portugal on 66 minutes, look to have an overlap. Looks like they can't convert it. Marika puts in what initially kind of looked like a no-arms tackle, but there is an arm kind of wrapping in there. 
Uh, but it's immense defence from the Australians. Desperate. But they still concede a penalty for slowing the ball down. And finally, the Portuguese get their second try of the game from the back of the scrum. The replacement number eight is able to dot it down. So 29 points to 14. Portugal, I mean, they had to work for it. But they finally get some, I guess, deserved points, man. Because they were, they were really good to watch in that second half. When Australia go back to 15, though, Mariki Corambetti finally bags himself a try. Probably his best game of the tournament. Karevi with the big initial line break. And Marika able to finish it off in the corner. So 34 points to 14. That's the final score. Great to see both sides wanting to keep playing after the clock was in the red. Uh, but neither really able to get it done. But there was certainly some entertaining play. So, yeah, not convincing from Australia by any means. Portugal still proved themselves to be a pretty good side. They will rue that yellow card in the first half. Certainly where the Aussies... Had their best period of the game. Bang, bang, bang. Three tries in less than 10 minutes. Uh, but the second half was certainly encouraging from them. And for the Aussies, man, I mean, the, the Stan Sports crew that I was listening to, their broadcaster, was also saying it. Like, it's a young Aussie side. So one would hope um, this is kind of better experience in the bank. Obviously, there's going to be some scars. Uh, if, assuming the probabilities say what they are, the Aussies do go home at the pool stages. You know, these guys will benefit from this game, a bit of experience, and um, yeah, some time to grow between now and the next World Cup. Run meters finished 532 to 630 in favor of Portugal. Portugal got more ball, 56%, more territory, 54%, and a higher tackling rate, 88% to the Aussies, 84 The Aussies did make more tackles, though, 134 to 129 They also conceded more penalties, 8 to 7 and um, the Portuguese had more clean breaks, 10 to 5. More defenders beaten, 29 18. But yeah, man, the Aussies, despite the stats maybe not being in their favor, showed some desperation. And uh, the Fords really got it done, especially in that first half. Turnovers conceded also for Portugal as, a, as an issue, 18 to the Aussies, 10. So a little bit more accuracy shown from the Australians. Sometimes that's just the way the Portuguese guys like to play the game. High intensity, high tempo can sometimes mean. You know, errors creep into the game. Uh, individuals, Mark Nowani Tawase, 103 metres, defender beaten. Parise, 124 metres, two clean breaks, three defenders beaten. McWright, four defenders beaten, 40 metres. Valentini gets man of the match, got that great try assist, bunch of tackles from him. Hooper, 21 out of 23 tackles. Uh, Susha Guedes, the uh, fullback for Portugal, 163 metres, a clean break and six defenders beaten. Storti couldn't get a try this week, but nine defenders beaten. Martins couldn't get that try as well, but 15 from 17 tackles from him. But yeah, Australian fans will need to be Portuguese fans for their final game against Fiji. As the Australians sit for a week to await their fate. So Portugal would need to win and deny Fiji a bonus point. Seems very unlikely, but man, Fiji almost lost to Georgia. Portugal drew with Georgia. Portugal have pushed Australia for periods in this game. Portugal pushed Wales for periods in their game. If the Fijians choke, it would be a massive let off for Eddie Jones. But in all likelihood, this was the last game because Fiji are a good side and they should be going to a quarterfinal barring a bit of a Portuguese miracle. But yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on the game. Subscribe to the channel and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.